Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Um, today, we're gonna be talking about why it makes sense for Toyota to make the Tundra and the Tacoma more of a common platform. Now, um, I'm not saying that makes sense for the consumer, and you do have to take that into consideration, and I'm sure Toyota has. I'm sure they have a plan for that. I'm not sure um, that they would want to increase the size of the Tacoma because that might you know, push it out of the market. And I don't think they'd want to decrease the size of the Tundra much because it might push it out of the market that it's in as well. So uh, I'm sure they've weighed out all their options. Toyota is a top notch manufacturing facility. And we're going to get into a little bit of their top notch uh, processes right here in just a minute. And then we're going to get into why it makes sense for Toyota to do this from a production standpoint. Um, like I said, uh, the consumer side, I'm sure they've took all that in. And normally, a lot of times, you know, they may poll a certain amount of people and see what they like and what they don't like and stuff like that. Um, I have 21 years of manufacturing experience. I am in no way, shape, or form an expert at this, but I do have a lot of experience in this field. So let me give you just a little bit of background of Toyota's history, just a little bit. We're not gonna go real deep into it. I've read several books on this, but I'm just gonna give you a brief little bit of their background. I did write this down because it's a lot to remember. It's not a ton, but I mean, it's just a lot of information to, to keep in. So I hope I pronounced this right. There was a man called Taichi Ono. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, he was the father of the TPS, which is known as Toyota Production Systems. Um, now, if you live in the United States, you probably know this as lean manufacturing or just-in-time manufacturing. They all go hand in hand. Um, we never did, you know, adopt Toyota production system per se. We made it into lean manufacturing, but it's basically kind of the same thing. And he was the father of this many years ago. Very, very smart man. Streamlined manufacturing. And Toyota has, you know, been streamlining manufacturing ever since. So what the TPS or Toyota production system is, it is a way to eliminate waste and best possible and, and best uh, possible efficiency to build a product. So you want to eliminate waste and build your product the most efficient way you possibly can. Now, that being said, there's always more efficient ways to do things. There's always new technologies and stuff like that coming along, which will make things more efficient to do. You know, you got robots now and, you know, a bunch of automated stuff and stuff like that. And it just makes it easier. They also don't make as many mistakes as humans normally. Not saying that, you know, it never happens, but, you know, anything can happen. I mean, man programs the computer, computers have glitches, but for the most part, you don't get your mistakes in automation that you do get just in your normal, you know, downstream manufacturing line. Um, now there are seven wastes of lean manufacturing and uh, they are overproduction and that's just what it states um, overproduction um, that cost you have all this overhead when you overproduce something also when you over um, overproduce something or batch build it as it is called um, you have all this inventory setting somewhere whether it's in a warehouse or whether it's it's somewhere um, also waiting um, not moving or being processed. You know, anytime a person is idle in a in a line station, um, that's just non-value added. We'll get into what that means here in a minute, but I'm sure that's pretty self-explanatory. But you know, the company isn't getting anything out of that. So waiting is one of the seven uh, waste to lean. Transportation, um, excessive movements of materials. Um, you know, anything you can get closer to the line at point of use and stuff like that is always better. If you have something at a warehouse 20 miles down the road and you have to go get it, um, that's not as good as having it right beside the employee. Then we come into inventory and just what I said a minute ago, you don't want so much inventory on hand that you have to keep all this overhead and find somewhere to put it or rent a space to keep this stuff because that is just costing you money. You want a more uh, just in time uh, philosophy. Now that can be scary in manufacturing because what if you run out of a part? I mean, that that's always something that you really have to plan for and you need good people in these roles that can plan this stuff out and Toyota does a great job on that. 
defects, you know, quality errors and stuff like that. Now, the reason I'm going through these is we'll get to this here in a minute on why it makes sense for Toyota to do this. I just want to go through some of these uh, seven wastes that, that Toyota uses daily. Um, defects, you know, quality defects and stuff like that, they really cost the company money. And Toyota does a good job, you know, cutting those back. Uh, motion, anytime you're having to use extra motions, even just turning around to get apart, you know, that's wasted movement, wasted time that could be spent on something value added. Then last but not least, you have over processing. And that is putting more work into the product than the customer, which is whoever your customer may be, which is me, I bought a Tundra or you, or if you're buying a Tacoma or whatever you may be buying, is uh, than what we value. So that's putting more into it than what we value to pay for. Now, like I said before, value added and non-value added, um, a value added step in a process is something that you or I are willing to pay for. If a Toyota employee puts a bolt in this console, I'm willing to pay for that because I want my console, you know, put there. I want it installed. I want it right here where it is. Um, if that employee has to walk, you know, 30 feet to get that part to restock it, I don't want to pay for him walking over there. I just want it to automatically be there to put in. So, you know, that's a non-value added step. So that's why you want to get your parts as close as you can to the line and uh, and not overproduce. Because I am i don't care if Toyota has to store 30,000 vehicles in a warehouse. I'm not willing to pay their warehouse charge. I'm willing to pay for my truck. So, you know, overprocessing is, a, is another, or non-value added is another, uh, waste that you're just trying to eliminate or another term for it. So let's get into why it makes sense that Toyota would want to share this platform. So you're going to commonize parts and when you commonize parts, it automatically decreases your change over time. If I don't have to walk that 30 feet to get that bolt because every model takes it, and that means I don't have to change it out, then I have just made my changeover time or my changeovers more efficient. And my changeover time has decreased. Um, if that frame is a commonized frame, you gotta think how big these frames are. Now, I don't know how Toyota gets these in. I don't know if they outsource them somewhere or they build them at another facility and bring them in on trailers or carts or how they do it, or if they run through an overhead system. I'm not sure how they do that, but I'm sure it's very cumbersome. They're huge. I mean, the frames are just enormous. So this is hard to handle. I'm sure they have hoists and stuff like that, but you have to think, if you have to change this stuff out because it is a different frame or totally different frame, then all this planning has to go into that. They have to plan for the changeover. They have to plan, um, you know, what they're going to run next. If they run out of a part, which does happen, it happens in manufacturing. You run out of stuff. I mean, it, it just happens. Um, they have to be able to do an emergency changeover or something like that. And then, they have to change out all these parts and all these frames. Well, the more common parts that you can put into these two vehicles that are made at the same facility, that doesn't matter as much. Because even if you have to do an emergency changeover, there's far fewer parts and far less difficult to do than it was six months ago before they commonized all those parts. So that's why it really makes sense for Toyota to do it in my eyes. Um, just the sheer, um, you know, logistics of it. You don't have to keep up with, you know, 30 parts. Now your people in, you know, supply management and stuff like that, they don't have to keep up with, you know, all these different parts. Their job just got more simpler and they just keep up with a handful of parts now. So it's easier to track a handful of parts and make sure you have enough of these parts on hand to build a product than it is if you have 30 extra parts and you're trying to manage all those and make sure you have those in time and on the line to build the product uh, when you need them there. So all this came down to just changeovers and it's more simple to track your parts and make sure you have them there. In my eyes, I think that's the big, uh, the big kicker for Toyota to do this. 
Um, I could be totally wrong, but just from my years of manufacturing, anytime you can simplify any part of production and change over, you have automatically increased um, output. That's my two cents. I could be totally wrong. That's a little bit of history of Toyota and why they are so good at what they do. And I'm sure they've thought this out as much as we have our negative thoughts about this. I'm sure they have totally planned for this and it just makes sense on a manufacturing standpoint for them uh, to do it this way because it's just gonna make it even more streamlined and they can make more trucks. Now, I've heard that when they start making more Tundra or when they redo the Tundra, that the Tundra sales may go up. Um, I've also heard that Toyota is almost at max capacity of building Tundras. If they streamline this process and they get a shared platform and they can minimize changeovers and uh, changeover parts and stuff like that, they can probably squeeze out a few more Tundras a year because they've just reduced their change over times. My two cents, maybe it makes sense to you, maybe it doesn't, maybe I'm totally wrong. This is just my opinion. Tell me what you think in the comments. You think it makes sense for Toyota? Now this isn't, does it make sense for us? This is if it makes sense for Toyota, and I think it really does. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.